Good day, everybody. We're back at the fossil fish experiment where we've been trying to synthesize a fish fossil. If you're new to the channel, this is not my normal content. We've had fish buried in sediment sitting here for over a year, and it's time to open it up. A quick recap on what's happened. Using hydrated lime, I mixed up a slurry and embedded several fish into it. By letting the surface dry, I can make a layer that will cleave apart later on. I put it in a steel case so I could add a ton of pressure, 20 tons to be exact, with a 20 ton jack. This follows an experiment that I did years ago in a 55 gallon drum where I mixed layers of hydrated lime and compressed it and buried it underground. I let it sit for 14 years before I opened it up again and when I did, it was pretty cool. The fish had a remarkable resemblance to the fossils that we find in the Green River Formation. Unfortunately, with this example, there were a lot of cracks. I'm hoping to improve upon that. But as far as the specimens go, I used fish and squirrels and bugs and lizards and birds. And the results I thought were pretty amazing and warranted working on a better method. The key to an experiment like this is patience. How much patience is yet to be determined. This was 14 years, but let's see what happened in one year. So over the past year, I've had to periodically repressurize it and fill it with water because it would slowly dry out and lose pressure. I had to get some thicker sheet metal because 20 tons is a lot of pressure. It wasn't even able to exhaust the jack force because the metal started to give way. But I still got a lot of pressure on there. Now, it's time to open it up. Oh, and it's heavy. Next time I'll have to use bigger threads, thicker steel, and just make it all around beefier. Quarter inch plate of steel and it put a pretty good bend in there. Quite a bit of oxygenation. Now you remember from the first video, this is all welded together. So the only way to get it apart is to cut it with a grinder. Grinding isn't the easiest job in the world, but the sparks make it kind of fun. As I open this up, I really don't know what to expect. So you can see there's steam. It means it's not quite dry, so with that steam coming out there, I know there's a little bit more moisture in there and I just want it to be as dry as I can, kind of like clay. This isn't actually lithified, so I want it dried hard like a clay would be. So back in the basement it goes to finish drying. I still want it to dry slowly because the faster something dries, the more likely it is to crack. But after about a week, it's ready to go. By propping it up on these wooden blocks, I'm hoping that I can use the jack to push out the core of sediment in one big block. The method of extracting these fossils is obviously something I still need to work on. Now with the bottom cut out, I can smell it, which tells me there's still organics in there. It should sit longer than a year, but we'll see how far along the process is in one year's time. That's in there a lot harder than I thought it would be. So I think we moved to plan B. So it's back to the grinder. The only other way I could think of was cutting the whole canister in half. And that seemed to do the trick. So you can see different layers here. Here's a sand we put and that's all red and oxidized from the iron plate on top. Here it's very dark, very black. Kind of looks like an oil shale. I'm sure it's not, but it could be stained from reduced iron maybe. Maybe the organics inside, I don't know. And below that we have some oxidized iron that leached through too. There's some interesting stuff going on in here. I'd love to hear some ideas on what you see going on here. If I ever did go for my master's degree, this is what I would want to study. It's exciting to think of 
what I'm gonna see as I open this up. It looks like a beautiful red sandstone on top. Not actually lithified, but that iron staining is pretty cool. With a paint scraper, I can find the layer and use even pressure to pry it open. And after a year of waiting, it's the moment of truth. Wow. Even in these early stages, I think the results are pretty spectacular. You can still see there's some skin, there's some decay to go. A lot of it has decayed in just one year time and this beautiful brown color has developed, which is very similar to what we see in the fossils in the Green River Formation. The next layer showed less decay and I'm trying to think of why that might be and my hypothesis would be since it was a layer down there was less oxygen so a more anoxic environment the less oxygen available the slower the decay you can see the flesh of the perch is gone but the skin is still pretty much intact now if I compare the one-year fish to a 14-year fish you can see the 14-year fish has a lot more decay this is actually the head of a bird from a 14-year experiment this is actually a bat wing from that 14 year experiment. And this is a small lizard from that 14 year experiment. So you can kind of see the difference between one year and 14 years. So there you go, that's the update. Now of course more time would cause more change. Now with the process of fossilization, it takes more pressure. It takes the actual dissolving of minerals to go into the bone. The flesh will actually turn to carbon in enough time with enough pressure. And I don't know that I can duplicate that in my basement. But the initial phases, you can see clearly. I think that's pretty cool. I'm gonna do some more experiments like this. Let it last longer than a year. Maybe when I retire, I have the process down. You never know what your neighbors are doing in their basement, do ya? There's the update. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Now what if I did one for 40 years?